everybody, and welcome to Python for Everybody. We are going to do, be doing some code walkthroughs. Uh, if you want the sample code, uh, you can download the zip from our website. The work that we're doing right now is we are in the process of building a spider and visualiza visualization tool for um, email data that came originally from this uh, website Gmain, but I've got my own copy of it. And so what we've done before is we ran gmain.py and um, I grabbed a URL. Uh, I have a URL that has all this data and I downloaded that and then I ran gmain again to catch up. So And so it took quite a bit of uh, catching up, but by the time I get to remember how it said it run tries to fail five times, well it ran out of data at 60,421 and then um, it started failing and then it quit. And so we pretty much have all of our data now. We have all we have finished this process in S content SQL Lite. Okay. And um, if I take a look in the database browser, we can see we got 59,823 email messages. And so if I look at any of these things, you see the headers, you see the subject line, you see the email address, you see the body of it. So remember, I split the body into in half and um, and the headers, and so that's I made this as raw as I possibly could because, as you saw, I had to spend so much time in the Gmain just getting the data successfully retrieved, and so I don't like cleaning the data up too much. And so what we're going to look at next is the data cleaning process. Okay, and um, and so this is gmodel.py is code we're going to take a look at now. So let's get rid of those guys and look at uh, gmodel.py. <clears throat> I don't think I need URL lib in this code. Do I have any URL lib? No. So I don't need that. Sorry. Fix that. Okay. So it's going to read from the database. It's got to call. Reg it's going to use regular expressions. And zlib is a way to do some compression. And so I'm going to do in this one. I'm going to compress some of the data to make it so that I have less data. To some of the text fields are going to be compressed. I wanted to keep these fields uncompressed inside of messages. Um, and uh, so we so so we have some just cleanup messages and cleans things up. And it turns out that the, the way email addresses in this particular um, Mail corpus, they changed over time, and we I, there's certain kinds of things. Sometimes the gmain.org is the email address when people want to hide their address. And I made all kinds of stuff, and I split it and checked to see if it ended with this, and I cleaned up things, this, this that, and the other thing. And so I have all kinds of cleanup stuff going on in here. And I have this mapping and DNS mapping that I'll talk about in a bit where um, organizations sometimes sent email with different addresses over time and people sent email from different pot time um, and we're gonna do the parsing of the date and that is the code for that um, we're gonna pull out the header information this is uh, sort of borrowed from the uh, the other code uh, we'll clean up the, the email addresses and the domain names and we'll pull the date out pull the subject out Plot the message ID, various things. So here's the main body of the code. We're going to go from content.sqlite to index.sqlite. And what I'm going to do every time is I'm going to wipe out index.sqlite and drop the, the messages, senders, subjects, and replies. So this is a normalized database in that it has foreign keys. So there's a messages table here with an integer primary key, the GUID for it, the GUID stands for Global Unique ID, sent time, sender ID, and, and it's gonna have a blob. These are blobs, binary large objects for the headers in the body because I'm gonna compress them in this database to make them. Uh, and then uh, the senders, has a, each sender has a key, and then uh, subjects, each subject line is gonna have a key, and then replies are a connection from one message to another, and so this is like a many-to-many. -many. Now, I also have this file called mapping.sqlite, and so we can take a look at that one, mapping.sqlite. And so what happened is um, this has uh, two tables that I hand deal with, and so uh, sometimes in the end, this was a email address 
that map to that. That's so Indiana.edu. That's a way to take an at the email address, and then these were a bunch of people that had uh, email addresses changing throughout the project, and I sort of kind of mapped them uh, in a way. And so this is just sort of like a I pull this in really quick, and I read all this stuff from the DNS mapping, and I other than stripping and making this lowercase, etc. I just am going to make a dictionary. DNS mapping, which is the old name to the new name, and the uh, email address mapping from the old name to the new name, and I'm using fix sender. Fix sender is because the, the email addresses, even within Gmain, were kind of funky. So don't worry so much about this. Um, Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is I opened up a connection just to read all that stuff in, and now I'm going to actually open the main content. And I'm asking it to open this a little trickier. I open that read only. Um, that was so that I could potentially be running the spider and running this at the same time. I get a cursor. And so I'm going to read through. So in, in the content file, this is the big one. I'm going to read through and go through every one and write all of these things in. And I'm going to take all the email addresses and I'm going to put those in a list. Um, so I loaded that. I've got the mappings loaded. Um, and so now I'm going to go through every single message. I got all the senders, all the subjects, and all the uh, global unique IDs. So I read in each message. So now I'm going through content one at a time. I um, parse the headers. I check to see if the sender's name, email address after it's been cleaned up is in the is in my mapping mapping.get sender and the default is I get back sender. That's what that's saying. Look up sender if it's in there, give me the entry of that key, otherwise give me sender back. Um, we're going to print every 250 things we do. Uh, We'll complain if this is true. We're going to go get the mapping between the senders, which is a way to look up the primary key. I could have done this with a database thing, but I wanted it to be fast. So that's part of the reason I read all these things in, so I could have those mappings to be really fast. You'll see this takes a little while, even though it, uh, you know, even though it's I got all this stuff cached. Um, and so then, if I don't have a sender ID, meaning that I haven't seen it yet. Then I'm going to do an insert or ignore into senders. And then I'm going to do a select. And then you've seen this where I grab the row back and I'm really just trying to look at the recently assigned ID. And then I'm going to not only set the sender ID for this iteration of the loop, but I'm also going to store it in the dictionary. And so that builds this dictionary up. And you'll see the same thing is true for subject ID. I'm going to insert it into the subjects table and get a primary key if I don't know what it is. And then I'm going to put it into, not only am I going to put it into the database, but I'm also going to put it into uh, my dictionary. And the same thing, um, I guess I didn't do it for the GUID. OK. So now what I have is the sender ID and the subject ID, which are foreign keys into the center table and the subject table. And I'm going to insert the message with the sender ID, subject ID, the sent at headers and body. And the values here are the GUID, sender ID, subject ID, sent at. Now this here is zlib compress. So what I'm taking is the, the message, <coughs> the header, and the body. And this little bit ends up with a compressed version of this stuff. And you'll see it in a second. And this keeps the size of these text things down at the cost of the computation of we have to, to the at the cost of the computation to compress and decompress when we want to read it. Okay, and then I pull the GUIDs out the the ID which is the GUID, um, and I pull out the primary key for this thing based on the GUID, and I update this dictionary. Okay, so. Let me run that code. It is doing a lot of cleanup. And I'll tell you, it took me a long time to make this work. So just so this code that I'm running now, oh, <laughs> don't forget to take a Python 3, Chuck. So you'll, this is going to run every 250. So it did all this pre-caching 
So that's how long it takes to do 250. Now there's 60,000 in here. And so this is really busy. The reason it's bouncing back and forth is that every time it makes this journal file, that's and then does a commit. So you can kind of see that it's, um, it's busy making journal files and committing, and there's a lot of activity going on here. Just so happens that Adam shows me these files. Okay, so it finished. It took about three minutes to finish that, right? And so if we take a look at the size of the files, we will see that the index is much smaller. It's fully normalized. It's still uh, 263 megabytes. It's all compressed. So let's take a look at that in the, in the browser. So it's 200 megabytes, but it loads up a lot faster. There we go. So we have a senders table, right, which is just kind of a, a many to one table. We have a subjects to table, which is a many to one table. And we have messages, which has uh, foreign keys. It takes a little bit to load that up. Okay, and so so we see the foreign keys for sender and subject, and we're and that saves us. All those foreign keys save us. And so we have, you can kind of see that I can't see the headers in the body because now they're compressed. That saves me a whole bunch of stuff, right? It saved me a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you know, and so uh, so that's what's in that file. Um, and that we've finished this process, okay? And we've finished modeling the data and making it really clean and we'll pick back up and the rest of the stuff we will do is actually visualizing pulling data out of index.sql Lite. The idea is this can be restarted, this can be run over and over and over, even though it takes like three minutes to run this, that's way better than uh, five hours to run this. So three minutes, five hours, and then you'll see, and we'll see now reading this is in seconds because we got it all nice and normalized uh, in a quite pretty way. So uh, I hope this has been useful. Uh, in the next one, we'll actually do the visualization.